Hi there, friends. Happy New Year. It is January 2nd, 2024. So my first Facebook Live of the new year. Oh, let's see. we got a few people jumping on now. Yes, Jenny, I had a good walk. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I went out at maybe five to four and uh, got in 2.34, no, 2.75 miles. Um, so I'm proud of that. But trying to get back to a healthier me. Um, but anyways, I hope you're having a great day. I'm so glad you joined me. Um, today, I'm going to be featuring the Be Mine product suite. I'm going to teach you a variation of the stack, slice, and shuffle technique, and we're going to have lots of fun. I'm also going to be giving you tips on how to use a builder punch. A builder punch is designed, um, defined as a punch that has several parts that you stamp and or cut out, punch out, to make um, a singular image, okay? So we have lots to go through today, and I will have, um, uh, three cards to give away. Our card base, we're going to make a couple changes on, so it's a bit different too. So it's a combination of new product, um, a technique, and um, a, I guess you could say a fun fold. There's a little twist on the card base. Before I get to that though, and while people are still jumping on, I do want to remind you that we are in the last few days of the last chance list for um, the September to December mini catalog. Uh, if there's anything you want from there, please order it today or tomorrow because that's it. The best place to find out what's left in that um, mini catalog is to go to uh, stampinpeace.com click shop Stampin' Up products, and then you can just type in last chance list or find it in the um, specials section of the uh, website, Stampin' Up website. The reason I say do that now is because that ends tomorrow on January 3rd, and on January 4th, we begin or launch our new mini catalog which goes through April. And we also are la launching our largest promotion, biggest promotion, most popular promotion of the year. And that is Celebration, which will happen um, January 4th through February 29th. So there's a lot in here. If you are not working with a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business and I'd be happy to send you a complimentary catalog and a complimentary celebration brochure. All you have to do is go to stampinpeace.com and fill out a contact form and let me know that you need those. Please note, I do not send catalogs to um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators. You should have received your own complimentary catalog from the Stampin' Up! company directly. Um, and if you are already working with a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you need a catalog, please contact that demonstrator that you typically order from, okay? So good things coming. I wish I could show you today all the good things in here, um, but I can't until January 4th. And I will post a time for Thursday morning where I will do my catalog walkthrough, show you some of my favorites, pull out some of the DSPs so you can see Obviously, I don't own everything, but I'm happy to show you what I do have and uh, talk to you about some of my favorites. All right, I'm going to flip my camera around now so we can get started making today's cards. And while I'm doing that, I kindly ask that you invite or share this live video and invite others to join us this afternoon. You can even um, tag your friends in the comments and that will bring them directly here.
Okay, my friends, let's get started. As I said, we'll be using um, products from the Be Mine Suite in uh, the April, January to April mini catalog that starts on the 4th of this month. So here's a look at the Be Mine Designer Series papers. These look um, pretty busy, hearts, flowers, bumblebees. I love the honey pots too. And then on the back side, there are some prints and patterns in various colors that um, you may even want to use as backgrounds uh, for Valentine cards, um, to coordinate with the Be My Valentine stamp set and punch, or you can use them other times throughout the year. I think they're just fun. They're um, Valentine-y, but they're kind of summery too. I really like them. This is the punch, um, stamp set and punch bundle that is available with that suite. And we'll be using some of these and I'll be giving you some tips on how to use this builder punch and talking about that a little bit. And the suite also comes with this sweet sorbet ribbon, real fine and easy to work with. I love it. And it also comes with some embellishments, which you can see I've already used up quite a bit, but they are fun, wonderful products. So I'm going to tell you what paper products I've already prepared for today so that you know. I have Daffodil Delight, and we'll be making three cards. So these are five and a half by four and a quarter inches, okay? five and a half by four and a quarter inches, which is our typical um, A2 finished card size, okay? Then I have three black card bases. This is sized a little bit differently than we usually do for the A2 cards. Usually we do five and a half by eight and a half. I've done five and a quarter by eight inches, okay? Five and a quarter by eight inches, and I scored it four inches down the middle, all right? And then each of these will get mounted onto the Daffodil Delight. Then for the inside, I have basic white that measures five inch by three and three quarters. And then I have some of the Be Mine DSP. I've chosen three patterns that I think coordinate together. And um, with the stack, slice, and shuffle technique, what you need to know starting out is if you choose three DSPs, you're going to make three cards with this technique. If you would choose four DSPs, you would make four cards with this technique, okay? Um, I don't. I usually do three or four. I don't do five and beyond. Um, you can, but the pieces get very small. All right. So let me put the bases together first, and then we're going to actually do the stack, slice, and shuffle because I want. I know some of you are familiar with it, but I want everybody to be familiar with it. So we'll have a lesson in cutting that DSP. So remember I said this um, Daffodil Delight is five and a half by four and a quarter. That's our standard size A2 card. That's why, and this is my base, that's why I wanted to make the folded card base just a little bit smaller, correct? Usually this size is our card base opening, right? And then this size would be the next layer, but I reversed those. That's all I did, okay? And because I've made the card base a little bit smaller, quarter inch smaller, then I've also made my white for the inside a little bit smaller. So is it all making sense? So it is a little variation 
You could even call it a fun fold if you like. I think it's, I. well, I guess you could call it a fun fold if that's what you like. It's, um, I think a fun fold has been a little bit more than that, but sometimes it's fun just to do a variation on the most simple of card bases. Oh, that's got a splotch on it, doesn't it? Let me, well, I'm going to put it there. Well, no, I'm not going to cut it. I'll put it there for now, but I'll, I'll know before I give it away that I need to do that. I don't know what that is. Oh, darn. But that's okay. I can pull it off and use it to punch sentiments or something. And when you are choosing your designer series paper, again, you're going to choose three different ones, but they need to coordinate. They don't necessarily all have to be from the same DSP pack. It's certainly okay to mix and match. All right. Um, but I will say I prefer that one kind of take on, what I want to say, like a lighter overall lighter look to it. And that would be, for me, that would be this one that has the white background. These I would say are more my darks and this is my light. So I would say two darks and a light or um, two lights and a dark, all right? You need some contrast in there. Um, I also like to work with different patterns. I don't, you know, say for example, um, we had this stripe in other shades, other colors, I still would probably pick some different patterns, okay? Not necessarily all stripes. You can, but I like to change it up. Alrighty, so let's get to the stack, slice, and shuffle part. So I've cut my DSP pieces five inches by three and three quarter inches. And here's the stack part simply means I'm going to cut all of these together, which is very easy to do. Our DSP is a nice quality, and our um, paper trimmer, the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, certainly makes it easy to cut three sheets of designer series paper. So basically what I'm going to do is cut this stack into three pieces, and Typically, it can be any shape you'd like it to be. Sometimes I don't even measure. Sometimes I just cut. Um, but today, I did measure. Um, and by the way, if you want to see another variation, and some of you may have seen this already, go to stampinpiece.com because yesterday I posted my most watched video of 2023. And it was a variation or is a very another variation of the stack, slice, and shuffle technique. So you'll want to take a look at that video as well. Um, and again, you can use the same technique in different ways. And that's what I'm showing you today. So I'm cutting the stack at one and a half inches. And then I'm going to turn this the opposite direction and I'm going to cut off one inch from the bottom of that. So now I have three, my three stacks of DSP, okay? Here comes the shuffle part. The first stack, I'm going to pull off the first DSP and put it to the back of the stack. The second stack, I'm going to pull off two and move it to the back of the stack. And the third stack, I'm gonna leave alone, okay? So now we've done the stack, we've done the slice, slice meaning cut, and then we've done the shuffle. So now we're ready to put together our cards. Now to put together these cards, all I'm going to do is pull off the top piece of DSP on each of the stacks to make each of the cards. And then I'm going to mount them to my basic black card front. 
and oh, that's a probably a little much of the glue it came out a little fast but I'm using multi-purpose glue so that I have the opportunity to move my pieces around a little bit so I get the same um, spacing of the basic black cardstock all the way around and that all my pieces line up. Sort of like putting together a puzzle. We want all the pieces to fit well. Just like that. So there's the front of my first Stack Slice and Shuffle card. Again, I'm going to take the top piece from each stack. Adhere it with my multi-purpose glue. And I tend to put all of them on and just not press them down hard. And once I have them all down, then I kind of move, move and slide things into place. If you press everything down right away, you don't have as much time um, to move the pieces into place or slide them into place. So that's why I just put the glue on each piece and lay them on top in the area where they're going to be adhered. What I love about the stack slice and shuffle technique is It's very efficient with your time because you're only cutting the DSP pieces once in a stack to make that many, unless you're making a lot of sets. Um, but you're going to cut once using the stack slice and shuffle technique to put together the three cards. This is a good way to use up some leftovers. Sometimes we get to the end of a pack and there are like partial sheets left. We'll grab some of those, kind of play with them, see what goes together, and then cut them. And you can cut the main um, DSP pieces to any size. I started with five by three and three quarter inches. You could do four and a quarter by three and then cut up or slice them, okay? That is completely up to you. So now, as you can see, I have three card fronts. They're very similar, but yet they're different. And so, yes, Jen, you're correct, very efficient. Now, let's um, do some stamping and punching because there's a few things in this bundle that I want to show you so you get the maximum use from it. And without much um, frustration, I'll say. <laughs> so here it is, okay. I've got this. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp a heart with Sweet Sorbet ink. And I want to stamp off, okay? So let me grab, this is scrap paper. So I'm gonna stamp off and then stamp onto my cardstock. Now before I punch that out, I want to stamp the sentiment in it, in that heart, and it says, love you. Super simple, right? Now, this heart shape is actually intended to be the bee's wings, all right? But what I, so I should say this, body, the bee's body, the bee's wings, and this would be for um, the little bee antenna, okay? You stamp them that direction and punch them. 
and we'll be doing some of that so you can see it. But I wanted to show you um, how you can also use that punch that's intended for the wings with this heart. Okay. I also will show you then, and I could have done it together, but I didn't. And I'm gonna stamp the heart kind of upside down at an angle. The reason being, I'm going to punch these hearts with the tiny heart intended for the um, bee's antenna with this punch. I don't need that other heart. That was from when I was making my samples. That was actually my stamp off. I guess I could have punched it before I did this. Would have made more sense, but that's okay. So now I've got all of these hearts, okay? Now I'm gonna use this one on my first card and those I'll use later. But now I want to give you some tips on stamping and punching the B. And this technique or this process will work for any of our builder punches, okay? Oftentimes I will say I will stamp um, the antenna and punch, punch, punch. Then I'll get another strip and stamp some wings, punch, punch, punch. Then I'll do the body, punch, punch, punch. That is perfectly fine if that is what you are most comfortable with, okay? Now, other times, grab my scrap paper here. Other times, what I like to do is take a piece of cardstock and punch everything, punch all the images together. By the way, isn't this a cute um, like word bubble? That's the first thing I saw when I saw, I was like trying to think, how did they get the bee out of that? But I like that little word bubble um, to use with some sentiments. And when I do this, this is my map or my, uh, let's call it a stencil, okay? Or um, yeah, let's call it a stencil. I like to do it in a color other than what I'm stamping on. So if I'm stamping on white, to do white on white is hard to see. But if I stamp or punch from a piece of colored cardstock, it's real easy to see. I wanna hold these together while I am stamping. So now I'm just gonna stamp each of these elements, okay? Let me go ahead and open up my inks. I want to be sure that, um, just like when you're using a stencil for first true stenciling, you always wanna make sure it's not moving, correct? Or like when we use the decorative mask, we're always holding it in a way that it's not moving and shifting around. If it helps to um, maybe put some washi tape on the sides, by all means, go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp the stripes and the stinger of the bee's body. And you basically want to be looking over the top of your stamps when you do this. It's a little bit hard for me because I'm looking at an angle, so I'm not getting my head in over the top, okay? And then, I'm going to fill in the bee body with the Daffodil Delight. We've got this fun oval here. And then I'm going to use the basic black or the black memento to stamp the wings and the antenna. I'm just gonna fit this right in here. Looks like I smudged that, was moving it around a little too much, had it too close while I was moving it, but it will work. And then 
Again, it's a little tricky because it's hard. I'm not able to look straight over it. Oh, not too bad. Then the antenna. So now, because I've done that, I'm able to punch all of these pieces at once. Just got to make sure I got everything lined up how it was in there with my stencil. And now I'm ready to put my bead together. So really, it's always going to be a matter of preference. You can do the same technique with your Stamparatus, okay? You just lay this on your Stamparatus, you know, lay the paper, lay your, you get what I'm saying. You're going to drop the clean stamps into the stencil, close up the Stamparatus to pick those up, and then you just ink up the various pieces, okay? So that is one way to do um, a builder punch. And if you're not comfortable with it, you wanna do it the other way, go ahead. It doesn't hurt anything to do it that way, right? You do what works best for you. Like I said, I don't always do it this way, um, but I know that many people do. So I like to show you different things and give you different options so that you can try each way and decide what will work best for you. Notice I brought in my silicone mat because it's Putting these pieces together, it could be easy to get glue in places we don't want it. Okay. Oh, I forgot to stamp his cute little smile on there. In the stamp set, there are a few different faces you can put on. This one I'm kind of like, hmm, what is that? Is that a mean look? Is that an indifferent look? Um, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> but I really enjoy the others. This, I think, is my favorite little face. So I have that. And now I can put this on my card. And I'm also going to put that I love you heart on. So let me grab some dimensionals. So I took my walk, literally, like, I got back 10 minutes before the live was to start, cutting it a little close, but, um, you know, if I didn't do it before the live, and I had a really busy day, and appointments and things, but if I didn't do it before the live, it would be dark, and I'm not in a treadmill mood today. <laughs> I was in a mood for um, walking outside. But I got it done, fresher, felt good, super gray days in Ohio lately. Um, and that's that's a hard thing for me. I don't mind the cold so much. I even like the snow, although we haven't had any yet. But um, the gray days are kind of downers for me. So it's important that I get in my exercise. And as somebody said... Um, in one of my recent lives. Oh, give it a little wink. And I was like, a wink? What are you talking about? And she's like, wink of Stella. I'm like, not a cute way of saying that. But giving these wings just that little bit of shimmer with your wink of Stella makes it so fun. I know it's hard to see that on video, but trust me, if you're in person, you pick up on that little bit of shimmer. Okay, let's go on to the next one, okay? Um, first of all, I pre-stamped my sentiment, but I want it, it's a little long, so I want to cut it down and I want to cut it at an angle. And I'm showing you this because it came up in a recent Facebook Live. How do you make your angles even? This is what I do. I cut off cut one angle, 
I take that piece I cut off and put it on the other end of my sentiment. Kind of make sure the spacing's about the same. And then I literally am putting the edge of my paper snips against the edge of that paper, the edge of that already cut angle. And that's how I get two matching angles, okay? So I'm going to be using this, and we're going to make a B in another way this time. Where's my little stencil here? I'm going to repeat this process, but again, if you're more comfortable just stamping and punching each of the different elements, by all means, do it that way. But it's always good for us to know there's more than one way to do something. Stamp my wings. And then I'm going to stamp the little antenna. And then I need to fill in the bee's body with the Daffodil Delight. You could also stamp the black stripes um, and the stinger onto Daffodil Delight cardstock itself, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and punch this. But when I put this B together and on my card, it's I'm going to have it in a different direction than our first one. And in order to do that, I need a second wing. So this time I will just make sure I have enough room there. Yes. So I'm just going to stamp and punch the second wing. So let's once again grab our multi-purpose glue. Oh, let's let's do his cute face. This bumblebee needs a smile. Anybody collect bumblebees? or hives. So now I'm just going to be putting a little dot of glue on the pieces I want to adhere. And by the way, notice on the wings, the lines don't go all the way. They don't come to a point. They kind of cut off there. That's what I use as far as my guide as to um, where I'm adhering the wings and the body. I'm having the body meet the edge ends of those lines, okay? So I'm gonna do this wing. And then I'm going to do this wing. And then I'm going to adhere the little antenna. So now I have a B with a completely different view. Okay, this was like a side view, the bee flying by, right? This one is more he's flitting in the air and looking at us head on. Carol, you're a bee collector. Carol Helms. Okay, cool. The King William Auction House? I've never heard of that. I may have to check that out just to kind of see what it is. Bees, bees, bees. 
The bee's knees. What are some other bee sayings? I can't think of any right now, but that one just popped in my head. So I'm going to put this bumblebee here, and then I'm going to add my sentiment. Of course, you can always stamp your sentiments on the inside, or you can stamp a sentiment on the outside and put a coordinating sentiment on the inside. For example, um, love you, or the happy Valentine's Day, or be mine, you make my heart buzz. You know, it's fun to mix and match. All right, so there's our second card. Now, the last one, we're not going to be... I didn't mean to, for it to come out that way, to be. <laughs> That's not what I intended. Um, but for the last one, we're going to be using some stamped hearts. And where is my little grid again? Here it is. Let me grab another piece. So for this, and does everybody know why I'm pulling in my stamp and pierce mat when I go to stamp? Oh, Carol, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I know. Sometimes it adds words for us when we don't even need to. I notice that too. If you don't do a space or a punctuation after what you say, it might fill in a phrase or something. Crazy. Um, so I need my sweet sorbet. I'm going to close these up and bring in my sweet sorbet ink again. And I want this heart to be stamped full strength ink, unlike that first one where we stamped off first because we were stamping the sentiment inside it. And then I also want to stamp the little one. Okay, now to save paper, I could have, since I only really need the hearts, I, um, Carol, do not be embarrassed. Like You are talking to me, the non-tech lady. It's, I'm a work in progress. I learn as I go. And I, and honestly, mistakes is how we learn, right? It's all good. It's all good. Um, to save paper, I could have stamped and punched lower, right? But as I said, I kind of like this shape, the bee body with the stinger, for a word bubble. So I don't mind punching that other piece in white because I'll do that. Maybe I'll even right now stamp, I love you. This would be fun to put on a Valentine treat anything at all on the inside of a card, right? So I'll save that for something else. Okay, so there's our stamped hearts. So let's add our sentiment. I previously stamped this. You are sweet as honey. Great for Valentine's Day, but it would also be nice for just a friend um, for a thank you card. Okay, maybe somebody's having a bad day and they aren't feeling, you know, someday, do you ever feel like you're just not good enough, you're not worthy, something like that, and you need to pick me up? This could be that kind of card. So again, I cut my angle. I take the piece I cut off, and I'm going to use that as my guide to cut the other angle. I put my paper snips right up to the edge of that piece of angled cardstock and snip. I have to tell you, I thought I was the bee's knees when I learned this technique because I was like you, like working so hard at getting them even. Now I don't even think about it. I just do it. So it's a great, give it a try. 
Give it a try. You will be amazed how easy it is. And it's fun to do. We don't always have to have a punch or a die for everything we do, right? So I'm going to put this here right over the seam of where the top and bottom pieces come together. And then I'm going to add three hearts, two big, or one big, two small. And those hearts then act as embellishments. I'm going to use the minis on those small hearts. Jen, I'm glad you've just discovered lots of tips and tricks on this journey with me. Honestly, most of them I have learned from other people, other stampers. So it's, it's my way of paying it forward, right? Share and share alike. Okay, so there's my third card. So now I'm going to bring all my cards back in here. And let me close this up. So here are, once again, the three cards I made with that stack, slice, and shuffle technique. Again, keep in mind the number of different um, DSP patterns determines the number of cards you'll be making. So if you did, I did three pieces of DSP, it made four, three cards for me. Four different pieces of DSP would make four cards for me. All right. And it doesn't really matter how you cut your cards. If you go to stampinpiece.com and look at my most viewed video of 2023, it is a, another variation of stack, slice, and shuffle. And the pieces were cut nothing like this. All right. So be sure and check that one out too. All right, who would like to, I feel like I should, oh, I didn't do, I can't believe somebody didn't point that out to me, because you guys are good <laughs> if I forget something. I want to add a little wink of Stella to this guy's wings, and, you know, maybe I'll just add a little wink of Stella to these hearts as well. Why not, right? I love Wink of Stella because it's so easy to apply. It's not messy. And it's just a fine shimmer. It is not glitter. It doesn't rub off. But it just adds a nice little extra to our cards and paper crafts. All right. If you would like to be entered into the drawing to receive one of the cards I made in this Facebook Live, please... Type in the comments now, sweet as honey, sweet as honey. All right. I'm a little bit behind in um, sending out my giveaways for the last few Facebook Lives, you know, with the holidays and whatnot. Um, it's been a little crazy, and that is on my list to do. I have a few people that requested catalogs. I'm going to package those up now and get those ready for um to drop in the mail tomorrow. Again, if you would like to receive a copy of the new catalog as well as the celebration brochure, I'm happy to send you a complimentary catalog if you are, number one, not a demonstrator. If you're a demonstrator, you should have already received your complimentary catalog from Stampin' Up. If you didn't, call Stampin' Up. Um, if you are not, and also if you are not working with another demonstrator, if you are working with another demonstrator, ordering from that demonstrator, and you need a catalog, please ask that demonstrator of yours, and I'm sure they would be happy to get that to you. Um, but if you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. And the best way for me to do that is by sending you a complimentary catalog. So go to stampinpeace.com and fill out a contact form with all the information. 
and requesting the catalog. All right. Um, I think that's everything for today. Now, on Thursday, I will be doing my usual 2 p.m. Facebook Live, some kind of demonstration. Um, but I will also be going live that morning at 10 a.m., okay? And the purpose of that 10 a.m. Facebook Live on Thursday will be to do a catalog walkthrough. That's the first day I'm allowed to show the open catalog to you through social media. So I will point out my favorites, um, maybe point out some things you might not notice. Um, and I can answer any questions for you. And I'll also walk through the celebration, what it is and what you can get, um, what exclusives you can get when you shop, host, or join Stampin' Up! Okay? All right, everybody, have a good rest of your Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you this Thursday, January 4th, 10 a.m. for the new catalog walkthrough, catalog launch, and then again at 2 p.m. for my usual um, stamping paper crafting demonstration. Have a good night.